What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Scale News Update. If you're not familiar with the show, this is where we talk about the news topics that happened in the scale world of RC over the past week. If you enjoyed the Scale News Update, hit the like button and let's jump into this week's topics. First for this week, Associated released a new version of the DR10 at the King of the Streets event. This is the new DR10M Team Edition kit. As the name would apply, the motor is now in the middle of the car. Not the dead middle, but in front of the rear shock towers, as opposed to the DR10, which had it behind the rear shock towers. The DR10M was ran at the event and was on display for everyone to take a look at. You can go through and see all the specs listed on the website below. You can actually order it already on a number of websites. It looks like the release is going to be coming before too long. Check that out. Looks like intercompatibility with other associated cars is going to be a thing, which is nice for racers especially. So check that out. Links in the description below to the DR10M as well as the rest of the stories that we'll talk about today. And speaking of King of the Streets, that event was last weekend. Again, a solid turnout with a $20,000 cash payout to the winter. And it was Samantha Joan who won the event this year. So she went home with a giant check. And from what I saw posted, it looked like the finals, that car ran a 1.69 time at upwards of 80 miles an hour. No prep cars are getting wild fast. Just absolutely crazy, but competition was high. It looked like a really good event. The coverage was great as well. If you really enjoy the no prep world, that's one to put on your calendar. You know, it's Vegas. So even if you go out the first round, looks like there's still plenty of fun to be had. Also in the no prep world, SSD released some new Y-spoke 2.2 front wheels for the no prep cars. These are machined aluminum available in a couple of different finishes. Nice looking style. Looks like these wheels will pair fairly well with the beadlock options that SSD offers for the rear of the car. In case you're trying to bling out your no prep. If you can't go fast, at least look good. We're finally seeing a complete package from MST on the DL1 kit. They've been showing previews of this van bodied vehicle that they are going to release for, it seems like almost a year, but it looks like it's finally about to come out. Now they normally release a kit and then sometime down the road, they usually release an RTR. So imagine it will be a similar case with this. This is a very tiny tired, the, you know, short wheelbase. This is not going to be an Uber capable vehicle by any means I'm positive of but it's got a pretty unique look that is, I, I mean, I kind of, I kind of like it. But since it is MST, of course, it's still not actually available. It could, who knows how long it will be before this is fully released and able to be purchased, but we're one step closer. I think the last photo we saw was just a clear Lexan body. Now we're finally seeing a painted, more product photo ready version. So we're just any day now. If you were ever thinking about picking one of these up, there's probably no excuse. You could have saved like $2 a week and you would have plenty of money by now. I want to thank Team Garage Hack for sponsoring the Scale News Update again this week. Team Garage Hack offers the two low transmission. This is a compact all aluminum center mounted transmission that keeps everything nice and low and offers 30% overdrive right in that package. Now you can install this in something like an SCX 10 II with a couple of extra pieces, or it's a perfect fit for a number of the flat rail style chassis options. Helps keep everything nice centered, built in overdrive. If you're thinking about planning out your next comp style build, Check this thing out. I'll link to it in the description below. And again, thanks to Team Garage Hack for sponsoring this week's Scan News Update. And the biggest story of last week, Axial released a 124th scale hard body new Ford Bronco. And obviously the hard body portion of that story is the part that is the most surprising. New Ford Bronco, you could see it. You wouldn't have been surprised. It actually got leaked a day early and no one even really expected or suspected that it was a hard body from the product photos that were released. They just thought it was another body and just kind of, you know, uh, it got leaked. There's new something coming tomorrow. But once the details all came out saying that it was a hard body, it surprised a lot of people. I got one of these early and posted a review video last week as well with all of the information on this new truck. And it is a hard body, so it's going to be heavier. It's not going to perform like the Lexan versions of the trucks but 
axial doing a hard body and doing it really well mounts well looks good everything is very complete the body is painted with extra details they went all out for their first hard body i was absolutely shocked i never expected axial to do something like that so it was cool to see them you know shake up expectations who knows what that means for the future Demo units of these new vehicles have started popping up at hobby shops kind of everywhere. So if you want to see one in person first, see if your local hobby shop has one. Otherwise, get your pre-order in linked where you can buy them in the description below. Speaking of 124 scale, Charisma posted up this little monster truck rendering kind of photo that looks like they're going to try and take their possibly their existing 24 scale and raise the suspension up and possibly use an existing 124 scale body and make it a monster truck. Seems like an odd approach, but it's Charisma. So, you know, odd approaches aren't that odd. Two versions that they're teasing at this point. The 124 scale monster trucks, I see more and more of them fairly often now. Not sure if that's really going to catch on, if it's gonna be a thing, but if it is, Furitech's release of a 124 scale monster truck last week definitely seems like it was a step up and a step towards the more, you know, well done direction. This is an aluminum chassis, lots of adjustment, eight shocks total on this thing. I believe it's using the element style solid axle. So it's got an actual ring and pinion, but rather than the plastic gears that the element uses, this is actually going to have metal gears in there. Transmission is the Furitech unit with the big brushless on it as well. So should be plenty of power. Overall, this looks like a pretty legit little monster truck. Again, 124 scale monster trucks, I'm not, maybe those are going to become more and more popular. I don't know, I, appeal of small scale crawling with a 124 scale makes more sense to me than the monster truck style, but maybe that's just because I like regular, you know, 110 scale crawling more than 110 scale monster trucks too. So it probably is just a bit of my own personal bias, but I've never let that stop me before. And then we had a new release from Tamiya this week with the Toyota Toms GR Supra, the GT500. A good looking version of the Supra. Obviously the GR, we've seen a lot of news on this last week with the release of the real Toyota Corolla GR here in the US, but this one looks really nice. Now underneath, as you can assume, it's a regular Tamiya platform, TT01 I think, as to be expected. The same thing you've seen a million times, but with another good looking body on top. Somehow they just keep pulling it off. They put good enough looking bodies on everything that we're just fine with whatever they want to slap underneath. I don't even think people care. It doesn't matter what they put underneath, just whatever the body is that they'll buy the kit. So if you're big into the A90 Supras, I can't see how this one wouldn't make your shopping list. Last week was also April 1st, April Fool's Day and being cautious on the internet was a thing. Lots and lots of April Fool's jokes this year. Yet some of them were either so good or so bad that you weren't sure if they were real. And the one that I got sent the most from people forgetting what day it was, was RC four wheel drives. Uh, what they call it? Auto boys, <laughs> not pet boys or auto zone auto boys. <laughs> I don't know what it says about Archfield Drive that so many people sent this to me thinking that it was actually real. I'm not sure how to take that. <laughs> but this one, I mean, it was just exactly like you would expect with it. The, the terrible stickers, the, you know, funny looking wheels, just they went, they went all into the artwork that they put on this thing. And their photo little press release thing was pretty fitting as well. It fooled a lot of people, I for sure. More than most any of the other ones that I saw. Tomorrow is Wednesday, and that is the last day for the Road to Scale Nationals video. That would be my final episode before I'm at the event. And my trucks aren't done yet. But uh, I think I'm still gonna try and get a video out. I think, <laughs> I'm not sure yet. Kind of depends on what the status of the vehicles are by tomorrow night when I'm filming the episode. Maybe if anything, I'll just gonna do like a one take GoPro freak out. They'll throw the intro in the front and just upload whatever version of a video it is <laughs> before I leave. I've got, I mean, I already, I have lists of things that still have to be done. Just 
Kind of glad that the news this week was a little bit shorter on items than it normally has been. I'll take it as a win this week. But with that story, it does do it for this week's news topics. But for this week's question, back to the 124 scale stuff. Now, 124 scale is pretty divisive. A lot of people just are not into it whatsoever. Don't like it, just have no appeal to them, whatever. And then some people just dive all in on the 124 scale stuff. So with the thought that these 124 scale solid axle monster trucks are starting to become a thing, what's your opinion on it? Are you into these 124 scale? Is it because you were previously into 124 scale trail trucks and now you're going to move into this as well? Or are you into the trail trucks but have no interest in monster trucks? Or, or had no interest in the trail trucks but like the monster trucks? Or are you like some people are just like, it's still 124 scale and I don't care about it at all. Interested to hear what your guys' thoughts are on this new ish area of the 124 scale scene. But with that, I've got to get to work on some stuff. Appreciate you guys watching the scanlies update every week. Make sure to hit the like button if you enjoy these. Subscribe if you're not already and hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.